Hey everybody, it's Riker Rider, and sorry for the lack of updates recently, but I've been really busy this week. Th Welcome back to Let's Play Final Fantasy. Today we are going to get into an encounter with a new enemy, the shark. The shark is probably the most powerful enemy you can run into in the ocean at this time. They have 120 HP and a damage rating of 22. They're weak to lightning if you bought the spell from Kerneria, but I didn't yet, because I have been on quite a money crunch in this LP so far. OW! See, that new weaponry is already coming into play here. Very important for you to have uh, updated weaponry from Provoka. Unfortunately, because I'm so short on money, I couldn't also get a short sword for Celeste. And you're going to need good weaponry coming into this new area. Pretty much just go out of the Bay of Provoka and head south along the coastline. You'll eventually hit a field. And there's a port over here. Just take that south and you'll find town. Or we can run into some really, really annoying enemies. These are like Chapter 3 enemies. These are arachnids. They have quite a bit of absorb, which makes them difficult to kill if you don't have upgraded weaponry. They can poison you with their physical attacks. But they don't have that much HP, only 64. Like I said, the problem is they have a pretty high absorb rating for uh, this point. If you don't have updated equipment, you may want to use fire on these guys. And this is one of the reasons why I do not like Chapter 2, is there are a lot of enemies that can poison you and money is still tight. Why am I not talking? I need to start talking. We're gonna get better equipment in the next town, but you're not gonna like the way we have to do it. The next town is big, too. You'll notice a significant increase in the experience here. Alright, we made it to town. Let's go to the castle first and collect some information about what we need to do. This is the Palace of Elfland. Hmm. We need to find this Astos guy and get rid of him. And just like, uh, and just like was said in Provoka, the Prince of Astos is sleeping. And it takes the herb to wake him. Remember who had the herb from uh, Provoka? We could have gone to the dwarf cave as soon as we had the. As soon as we had the. Uh, the ship. And there are some good treasures in there. Mainly for, mainly for selling for gold. But. I don't feel that it's pertinent to go there at the moment. You can if you don't want to grind as much, but the problem is not so much the gold as it is the experience. Aha! Uh -huh. That just reinforces what we learned in Provoka, that Matoya definitely has the herbs, so we'll need to keep her we'll need to keep an eye out for the crystal so we can wake the prince. This is one of those things that I actually think is cool about the game is the game doesn't t really tell you where to go. But we don't have enough information to move on yet, so let's head into town and collect more information. Yeah, we know we need to save your prince. Now I could hit the item shops while I'm here, 
but I want to focus on one task at a time right now, and that's figuring out where to go next. So this Dark Elf... The Dark Elf is Astos. There are actually a lot of people to talk to here. So he's... in a remote area of the map. Ah, the Northwest Castle. The game... Th the game doesn't tell you directly what you're supposed to do, but if you talk to all the NBCs, you can infer where you need to go. Now, yes, swords of uh, swords and uh, equipment made of silver are powerful, but they're very expensive. As a matter of fact, in the uh, later versions of the game, they don't sell uh, silver equipment here because it's way too powerful and way too expensive for your current level. Now, don't get me wrong, the upgrades here are still great, just... in the GBA version, rather. Oh, there's a nice little homage to uh, Square's other series here. Anybody played Dragon Warrior? I like that, that's a nice little homage to Dragon Warrior. Well, I believe that's everybody we can talk to, so let's get cracking with... Uh, with what we can buy here. You'll want to buy a silver sword for both your fighter and your red mage. This is a very powerful piece of equipment, and once you get this, you probably won't need to buy another weapon for your fighter or your red mage for the rest of the game. Anything better than that, you'll just find in chess. As far as armor goes, uh, you'll want to buy iron armor for your fighter. Hand down the chain armor if you haven't bought any for your red mage. I was wrong. Red mages can't equip chain armor. You'll want to buy copper bracelets for your other characters. Now the item shop has some great stuff here. This is one of only two item shops in the game where you can buy soft potions. You don't need to buy them now, but you'll need to buy a lot of them later. A house? They're too expensive for you to use right now, but they're really a fantastic item. If you use them on the world map, you will recover 120 HP and all your magic for all your party members. Now this was fixed in later versions of the game, but in this particular version of the game, the uh, it restores your magic after you save, so if you use a house and you're playing on the console version, you'll want to use a tent after you use your house so you save your magic. Um, most of the level 3 magic spells here are very valuable. Fire 2 deals 32 to 128 damage to all enemies. Uh, Lightning 2 does the same thing, except it's Lightning Elemental. Hold will paralyze an enemy, and Lock 2, just like Lock, is bugged. I don't like Hold either. But you'll definitely want to get Fire 2 and eventually Lightning 2. The White Magic spells are equally, if not more, valuable than the Black Magic spells. You'll want to get Cure 2 for your Red or White Mage. Heals 32 to 64 HP to one party member. Harm 2 does so much damage to undead enemies. 40 to 160. Uh, Anti-fire cuts fire damage in half. Recommended for chapter 4. And heal restores between 12 and 24 HP to all party members. But heal can only be used by uh, white mage. So I'm out of luck. Now unlike almost every other town in the game, this town has four magic shops instead of two. But the white the white and black uh, level four magic is way out of our price range right now. But I'll go over the spells anyway. Pure is uh, just the equivalent of a pure potion. It's not really worth buying normally, but the only other spell 
a white level 4 spell that's even worth it is Anti-Ice, and that's useful in Chapter 4 as well. So, when you have money to spare, you'll want to buy Pure more out of convenience than anything. Uh, fear causes enemies to run away, it's a useless spell. Anti-Mute uh, counteracts the Mute spell, which very few enemies use. Black, the level 4 Black Magic has a very important spell that you'll be using for the entire game. FAST! The, when used on a party member, this doubles the number of hits they, re, they uh, deal out in battle. Sleep 2 is absolutely worthless. It has uh, a high accuracy, but it only affects one enemy. Confuse, not worth it at all. In fact, you'll get an item later that casts that in battle. Ice 2 is very valuable, but not right now. That spell deals 40 to 160 ice damage to all enemies. Now, this may seem like a daunting shopping list, since you're going to need well over 15,000 gold for everything. But I have a list of good spots to gain levels and gold that I'm going to go over shortly. Alright, there are three locations that are primarily used for level grinding and gold farming. And the one I really like is uh, is uh, unusable until you get up to about 3,000 gold. Uh, this location on the coast southwest of Elfland is the spot H.C. Bailey likes. But I don't like this place because there are way too many enemies that can poison you. So I like a different location. Okay, the location that I like better than that one is this field. This field to the east of Elfland. Um, these are one of the few annoying enemies that you can run into in this field. These are asps. You could have run into them in Chapter 1. I'm not going to go over them again because I already listed their statistics in uh, a previous video. So go back to Episode 2 if you want to see uh, their combat stats. I'm just showing them off because I haven't yet. The thing that I really dislike about poison in this game is um, is you have to switch your party around after you cure the poison unless you do it in battle. The reason why I like this particular field is because you can run into groups of ogres and creeps at a very high rate. It's something like every 36 out of 64 encounters. So what I want to do here is get up to about... 3,000 gold, but I've taken care of that already. Once you have 3,000 gold, buy Fire 2 for your Red Mage and your Black Mage. The only way that you can reliably take advantage of this final method is if you have two people capable of casting Fire 2. Okay, we're back at Provoka. Any of you who have studied this game before know exactly what I'm going to do. Remember what I said about enemy domains? Well, there's a particularly abusive spot uh, known as the Power Peninsula, or the peninsula northeast of Provoka. Oh great, these guys. You can run into these guys uh, as a rare encounter in the Elfland area, but they're much more common um, south of the Power Peninsula. These guys are geists. They can hit up to three times, and they can stun you. They only have 56 HP, but because the stun chance for their physical attacks is calculated with each individual hit, if you get unlucky, they can wreck your party in a hurry. If you run into them, um, normally I would recommend using Fire 2, but in order for the method to work, we have to save all our level 3 spell charges unless we have at least 3, and by the time you have 3 level 3 spell charges, you're probably going to be able to survive that encounter anyway. Ow! I don't like critical hits.
Now the thing about the Power Peninsula is uh, the last four squares of it, um, there's a 2x2 two two spot that's located in an enemy domain that is part of Chapter 7, so you'll encounter enemies that you normally aren't supposed to be able to find until almost the end of the game. And most of the encounters there can kill you, no matter what you do at this point. But there's a specific encounter that we're looking for. I can't stress enough, it's very important for for you to have two people capable of casting Fire 2. Now, another thing, if you have, uh... If you're doing this on the original console version, you'll want to bring around five tents here. Before you go into the Power Peninsula, use a tent to save, and then go up and see what encounter you get. If you don't get the correct encounter, do a hard reset, and you'll go back to your original, uh your original uh, file. And then you can just try again until you get the correct encounter. So I am going to take a minute to find said encounter and be right back. Thankfully, it only took one encounter to run into the enemies I wanted. So let's see if we can take these guys out. It's not guaranteed, even with this method. The encounter involves one or more Zombles and or one or more Trolls. The Zombles are better because they give much more experience and gold, but the reason why this method works is because all of these enemies are weak to fire. You need to have both of your mages cast Fire 2 in the opening round and hopefully kill three to four of them. You need to get this off before they attack because these guys have massive attack power for this point in the game. They can probably kill two of your party members. Now, normally you're not supposed to run into these guys until Chapter 7. But this is that one encounter that we can kill. They're, we can't deal with any of the other encounters. Come on, get there this round. We need to get there this round or somebody's going to die. Yeah! Now, take a look at this. This is awesome. Look at that experience in gold. That is just obscene for this point in the game. So now what you can do is you can go back to Provoka, use another tent, and just repeat this process. You can get golden experience in a third to a half of the time that you would spend uh, doing this at Provoka. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish getting the uh, items to prepare for the next leg of chapter 2. This part of the game was terribly paced, so I have no problem taking advantage of this design flaw. So next time, I am going to see you back in Elfland with my preparations complete on Let's Play Final Fantasy.